Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on my tutorials on thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. This is video number 45 and I'm going to discuss the clausius clapeyron relation. So the previous video to this is number 44 where I discussed phase diagrams and number 42 where I discussed the Gibbs free energy per particle. I'd also like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com So, the Clausius-Clamperone relationship, I suppose, it relates entropy and and uh, and volume. Okay, and that's that's really what we're going to do. And there are different ways of doing it, depending on whether you're talking about a liquid and a solid and liquid phase change or a liquid gas phase change. So, first of all, what we need to do is look at the thermodynamic relationship or the thermodynamic identity for Gibbs free energy. So, the infinitesimal change in the Gibbs free energy is minus. SDT plus VDP plus mu dn. That's the thermodynamic identity. So we saw in a previous video that dg can also be written as mu times dn, or that if we integrate this, we get the Gibbs free energy per particle is equal to the chemical potential for that reason. So if we look at this particular uh, thermodynamic identity, we see that entropy determines uh, the entropy determines the temperature dependence of G. And the reason it does that is because we have del G del T is equal to minus entropy. Similarly we could say volume determines the uh, the pressure dependence of G because del G del P is equal to volume. Alright? Uh, okay, so where do we go from here? This suggests this suggests that on a PT diagram on a PT diagram, the phases should be related by S and V. So what are the phases? We're talking about the solid phase, the liquid phase, and the gaseous phase. Okay, so what does equilibrium mean? We know that the universe, the universe wants to increase its total entropy, but equivalent to that is minimizing the Gibbs free energy of a system. That's that's a, a video I did in the past. So that means that in equilibrium, the Gibbs free energy of the two different phases that we're talking about should be the same. So, for example, on a solid liquid. Uh, phase diagram, we should have our phase boundary. We should have the Gibbs free energy of the solid equal to the Gibbs free energy of the liquid, or the Gibbs free energy of a liquid is equal to the Gibbs free energy of the gas at the liquid gas phase boundary. Or similarly, we could have the chemical potential of the solid is equal to the chemical potential of the liquid, and the chemical potential of the liquid is equal to the chemical potential of the gas. You, you might you might say to yourself, well, why is that? Well, if the chemical potentials were different then the particles would have a tendency to flow into either the liquid or in this case the liquid or the gas phase or the solid of the liquid phase or the liquid phase but by the definite equilibrium that cannot happen so that means that the Gibbs free energies or uh, the Gibbs free energies must be equal and so too must the chemical potentials okay so I'm just going to work at this particular one only okay so in order to, to address the liquid gas phase, I'm going to talk about the chemical potentials. And the li solid liquid phase, I'm going to talk about the chemical potentials. But there are, so there are two different scenarios to analyze, but I'm only going to analyze the second one. And it follows very simply to do the first one, or in, in, a, in a very sim uh, uh, similar manner. So let's look at the thermodynamic identity here. Now, so we have minus the entropy of our liquid times dt plus the volume of our liquid times dp plus the chemical potential of our liquid times dn is equal to minus the entropy of our gas d 
dt plus the volume of our gas dp plus the chemical potential of our gas dn. Alright? So, because we're talking about a phase boundary, or a phase, uh, yeah, a phase boundary, both the pressure and the temperature are constant. So, the con we have a constant temperature, the change in pressure is constant, the change in temperature and the change in pressure, they're all going to be constant. Okay? Also, we can say that the number of particles in the gas is equal to the number of particles in the liquid after transformation. So we can ignore this particular term. So this, the, the, the term, the term including inclusive of n, we can ignore. So for that reason, we can rewrite this as minus the chain or minus the entropy of the liquid dt plus v of l uh, dp is equal to minus s of g dt plus v of g dp. Or if we want, we could rearrange this and make it look much nicer that dp dt is equal to the entropy of the gas minus the entropy of the liquid divided by the volume of the gas and the volume of the liquid. Okay, and you can have a similar relationship on the gas-liquid boundary. So, that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.